I'll give you a secret, Ian. Anytime authority is challenged, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, I have I'm definitely learning that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially from D D. You you give me all the answers. Yeah. yeah I'm D and Z let, allows me to be the person I truly am. <laughs> Which is apparently a murderous psychopath. <laughs> Welcome to the What's Our Verdict podcast, where we fashion ourselves cinematic judge and jury. My name is JJ Crowder. I'm here with my co-hosts, Javier Ortiz. What is up, my nerds? And Ian Anderson. Some shit. We appreciate help growing the podcast. Go ahead and hit that follow or subscribe button. Tell a friend about us. Go check out our website, whatsourverdict.com, where you can listen to all of our episodes. Sign up for our newsletter to get exclusive content and updates. Pick up some merch and interact with us. The question we always ask if you ever find yourself wondering if you should spend the time, money, or both on a movie up with that question each week we put a movie on trial discuss the facts pass judgment and let you know our verdict today we're reviewing king richard it was released november 19th 2021 it was written by zach braylon it was directed by ronaldo marcus green it stars will smith sanaya sydney Demi singleton ingenue ellis john barenthal and tony goldwyn a look at how tennis superstars venus and serena williams became who they are after the coaching from their father richard williams if you haven't seen this movie and you want to avoid spoilers go check out our spoiler free review on youtube uh, where you can find out if you should watch this movie and, and how. There is a link for that review in our show notes. So go down and check that out at, at our YouTube channel. If you are okay with spoilers, if you've already seen this movie, hang out with us because we're going to spoil the shit out of this thing. So yeah, let's talk King Richard. It was a good movie. It's good to see Will Smith doing something other than computer Shitty action movies. Of, <laughs> yeah, of himself. <laughs> Weird mm. shit. Like, Can him not CGI to look young? Yeah, yeah, that was did not but, like. <laughs> the last thing it's been it's been two years since we almost two years since we watched a Will Smith movie. That's crazy. Like that used to be not. I think ever that was one of our first ones, right? It like was. that was one of our first. I think it was. Yeah. Our, it might have been our second episode ever, second or third. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. Gemini like Man. Third, Gemini first. Man was early. Oh. It's oh. our number two episode, fellas. Wow, I hope we rated it accordingly because that movie was bad. Well, anyway. that was still when we were doing the the one through ten rating, but yeah, we shat on it pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the rating's probably still accurate, even though it's on a one to ten. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably like under five, well under yeah. five. I think I might have given it a five because I was still rating pretty generously back then. I hadn't <laughs> learned that I needed to shit on movies more often than not. <laughs> which I so. Didn't know. What I found really funny about this movie, though, was that I walked into it thinking that it was going to be a story about Serena and Venus Williams and their, their upcoming. It, it, that's not the case. It is a story about Venus Williams and how she becomes great at what she does or whatever. Yeah. Serena, like, takes a backseat, like, 30 minutes into this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and it's kind of interesting because when you say that, I mean, that's kind of how Serena became who she is too, is by taking a backseat, which is hard to watch in this movie. Like it's one of those things where I kept looking at Casey going, what are we talk about Serena? Like yeah. she's the better tennis player. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't, I didn't know that. I, I, I know a little bit about their story and I think it's hilarious in the tennis community when people are interviewed and like, wow, you're the first person to do this. And they're like the first male tennis player to do this. Cause I think both Serena and Venus have done it like five times each yeah. so, or whatever. <laughs> so like, I know them as like athletes in their career, but I don't know their origin story, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, to me, they're superheroes in their own right. So origin story makes sense i like that term well i mean they're arguably some of the best athletes on the planet let, let alone best tennis players yeah. oh no question well that's and i you know we mentioned this in the spoiler free when i talk about tennis players like i used to think uh tennis is a stupid sport and it's no there's no golf way. is a stupid sport but, yeah, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> tennis is a real sport Javier is looking to trigger me today. I keep just <laughs> pushing my button. Well, I'm being respectful. I called golf a sport. Like that, that, that hurt me to say. That's fair. I don't think But I, sport. yeah, I used to not be interested in tennis because I thought it was just, I was like, what a dumb sport. I never questioned that it was a sport, but I was like, what a dumb sport. And then I actually watched it and realized that these guys are on the go, full sprint, 
fucking nuts for four plus hours. Like a short match is like two and a half hours in the pros. Like that's a ridiculous, somebody got their ass handed to them. If it was a two and a half hour match, like that, this sports. So I could beat that record. I, 30 minutes. I could, <laughs> I could be beaten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have mad respect uh, and his players. So like, yeah, these, those two are insane. And then the things that they've done, like, are, it's just crazy. So I will say as much as I do agree with you, JJ sports without a clock on them, like a definite end, kind of drive me crazy. <laughs> Baseball's that way too, where it's like, you could be here for, you could be here for days if you wanted to. It's true. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. So that's, I'm okay that's why I like that. boxing. It's like, <laughs> you're going to be here for exactly 24 minutes, and then we're out of here. Well said. <laughs> or faster, you know, if there's a knockout, you can yeah, be out exactly. in a couple seconds. <laughs> yeah, the, the surprising thing is it's going to be shorter, not longer. Yeah, most likely. <laughs> No, I'm okay with those sports. Like, well, at one, I love baseball, but that's a different, that's because, yeah, I just love baseball because I played it and it was fun. But like, I'm okay because, like, the one thing about tennis is, you know, sports drive me crazy. Or like, I love to watch soccer, but soccer drives me nuts because it can end on a tie. Pro football drives me crazy because it can end on a tie. How do you end any sport on a tie with the exception of like, no, no, there's not a sport that I can think of that I'm okay with it ending on a tie. Like that shit drives me crazy. I will say this about tennis and sports that don't have timers. That means it's whoever can last longer. Yeah. And that's that's a real yeah. test of athleticism. Whoever can play longer. And that's yeah. cool. Because you have to go the distance without make, or making the least amount of mistakes, right? Because that's mm-hmm. at the end of the day what sports come down to is who can do it better, meaning for longer. who can be more technical, and make less mistakes for the longer period of time. And so I, yeah, I definitely agree with that. But wasn't there like a college football game a little while back that they had like half a dozen overtimes or something? Yeah. There Do was you guys like remember that? nine overtimes like three weeks ago. That's a test of lasting right there. Cause that one, that's crazy. Well, so we're having a timer remember. at that point. Well, <laughs> yeah. See well, if you could have ties, that game would have been over. Like a couple hours before. That's well, why they have ties. The one thing I love about the college game is that they, they like make it more difficult. So in college football, like they shut you down and they go, okay, you get two overtimes to try to score a touchdown, kick a field goal, whatever. And then you get the extra point. You kick the extra point. Once you hit, I think it's four overtimes or three or four overtimes. Anyway, they release wolves. You have to like <laughs> fight off wolves. I wish that would be amazing. <laughs> I would watch that. No, they force you to go for the two point conversion. So you can no longer kick an extra point. You have to score basically another short yardage touchdown, which is exponentially harder. And mm. then at some point, when you hit a certain point, you're not even trying to score touchdowns. Everything's just a two point conversion. So you better fucking score. So they make it more and more difficult the longer it goes, which I appreciate. But yeah, you got to, there's a winner. And I can't, like, I hate ties. Fucking hate it. Watching the World Cup drives me fucking crazy when there's a tie. I'm like, this is bullshit. How unsatisfying is this? That yeah. they, there's you, guys no are, you guys are the best in the world in the sport. You guys are getting participation trophies. Come on, yeah, dude. Exactly. <laughs> you, you seen the Ted Lasso bit where he's like, come win or lose. You know, we're going to leave it all out there. Or tie. Or you can tie. <laughs> you can or you can tie. That makes my job so much easier. <laughs> Drives me crazy. Yeah. And that's so tennis is insane because they have a tiebreaker. Like if you know anything about tennis and I didn't until someone explained me and it's not like sudden death tie breaker. Like most games now, if there's a tie, there's a sudden death. It's next one to score or they make it more difficult. Like in college ball, not fucking tennis. It's if you're tied, you're on serve, you score a point, it switches to the other person serving. And then they have a chance to tie it again and then they have their on serve and, and then it's just oh, these shit. fucking matches can go. So I can score a point ever. And then they have a chance to score a point back. If I defend it properly, then I win the tie. Correct. But you if have, they score on me, then we do it again. 
Yes, you have Jesus. to break serve in a tie, you break someone's serve, and that's one of the hardest things to that do. That makes sense. Break serve. That's fair. Yeah, right. Because you have like an advantage when you're serving, yeah. so it's only fair that both people get that that same advantage. Yeah, I it, mean, say what you will about tennis, it's fair, right? Dude, like, it is uh, no oh, joke. I didn't say anything about tennis, yeah. just that it doesn't have a timer. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's Jeez, still sport. Ian, still respect the sport. sport. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was talking about you, Ian. I was just, in general, uh, you know. Yeah, no, it's just, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, I get a little defensive. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Jesus. Calm down. <laughs> yeah, porcupine's going to like, yeah. I don't know. Spike this isn't now. the argumentative movie. That's that's for later. Yeah, that's for later. I'm just practicing <laughs> so I can join <laughs> in the fray. <laughs> yeah, no, tennis is no joke. So it's even more impressive. I'm glad I know more about tennis than I did, you know, 10 years ago or whatever. Watching I still don't know anything about tennis, if I'm being honest. In fact, the only two tennis players that I know are Venus and Serena Williams. <laughs> and McEnroe, <laughs> right? McEnroe. Because of all the, like, anger. Yeah, nope. anger. <laughs> don't know who that is. You don't know that? Uh-uh. You'd get a kick yeah. out of him, Javier. I do know that ball up. boy that got just nutted by a tennis <laughs> ball that went, like, way out of bounds. Yeah. That's the only other thing I know about tennis. Poor kid. Yeah. There's an anger management tennis dude. Oh, dude. Are we talking Don like McEnroe? he was in this movie? Like he was in this movie for two seconds. So like when he takes the Serena and, and Venus to this coach, the very first coach, I think it was. And mm -hmm. there's the two or no, it wasn't the very first. It was the one that played by Tony Goldwyn. So the first one that took him on when he yeah. shows up and Pete Sampras is there playing the guy with the curly hair oh, and the headband. Yeah. Yeah. The curly ha got hair in the headband. That's John McEnroe. And that, <laughs> so like, that's why Will Smith's character, Richard was like, dude, you coached McEnroe. Like <laughs> you can deal with like me. <laughs> it's, Cause McEnroe was a pain in the ass. This guy's breaking rackets and shit. Like <laughs> he used to fucking get in arguments with the judge all the time. That seems like so anti tennis, right? Oh, tennis yeah. seems like such an organized, calm sport. <laughs> Tennis hated McEnroe. Dude, that's like, time. what's that ice skater chick that the oh. organization hated? They made a yeah, movie yeah. with our girl, with our blonde girl. Oh, yeah, Tanya Harding. But that's Tanya like, Harding, yeah. Because she basically assassinated a woman's career. Like, she, yeah, yeah, no, no, that didn't help. But before that, like oh, in yeah, the movie, crazy. at some point, she goes up to the judges. She's like, suck my dick. I was like, yeah. nice. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, McEnroe, like tennis hated McEnroe at first because he's just this unruly asshole american the problem was he was very good at the game too like yeah, that's a problem it's hard to hate people who are really good at it yeah <laughs> but yeah like he if a call was well, I, I think like, it's not hard to hate him it's just hard to get rid of him right oh that's true true, true. well i'm sure he like brought money into the sport right oh, but people yeah. watched for him that's like conor mcgregor that's in ufc point. like that he dude is one of the most unlikable people i've ever seen on tv but like I mean, he's not good anymore, but he used to be good, and he brought money in. So, like, how do you well, how do you get rid of him? Well, McEnroe <laughs> brought true. a new breed of fan to tennis too. Like, he brought in American white trash, like myself. Yeah, he watched the game. You know what I mean? Like, we were like, dude, I can get behind this fucking unruly argument because it was always you're waiting, you're waiting for a close call because you yeah. know McEnroe is going to still lose it <laughs> and throw that shit in the crowd at some point. And start so, what his team is bringing like? Twice as many rackets as he yeah. normally need. <laughs> Fucking Mac, he dents rackets. He'd smack them. Up. Oh, dude, it was the funniest shit to watch. So people would watch McEnroe because it was just a mo a matter of time before he melted down on the tennis court. Like, so now I want to see. I want to see someone bring some class into like NASCAR. Yeah. Like some British dude shows up <laughs> and he's just super uber classy. Oh, and now you just have all these like really high end, uber rich British people watching NASCAR. That's the story I need. That'd be funny as fuck. <laughs> 20 inch Asians doing a review on that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I will say that early on, this movie dragged for me. And I think it was partly because, one, it took me a minute to get used to Will Smith's accent. How like, good was that accent? I don't know. I, okay. I don't. I don't know. You're a resident Southern dude. So he, well, that wasn't a Southern accent. That, yeah. That I, was like, I think it was supposed to be like a combination. Cause he talked about growing up in Shreveport. I yeah. think it was supposed to be like a combination, Louisiana and New York or wherever they were at. 
Cause like they're in Compton, LA or sorry, LA. Yeah. So, I mean, it was an odd, but I, that was no accent that I, okay. Cause I was like, this sounds more like a speech impediment. It doesn't yeah. accent. The only thing that like got me, the only thing that he did that's very Louisiana is that like Bobby Boucher, like, oi, like the weird oi noise. Like when you're saying like, I don't remember what he said in the movie, but like, and it doesn't fit. It's like, they take their eyes and add like an O sound almost mm. like that's the only thing. I was like, okay, that's definitely Louisiana. But outside of that, like, I was like, I have no idea what accent. And that's Will Smith's downfall. And these movies that he does, like, phenomenally well at, like, acting, like, these parts and, like, reenacting. Like, the one he did about the guy in the NFL, the doctor that brought oh, to that was life. good. Concussion. Concussion, yeah. yeah. His accent was terrible. Like, that, yeah. <laughs> it was the only movie that he's done an accent really well with it was the one with, about Ali. Cause he sounded a lot like mm. Ali, yeah, yeah. but every other accent that he's done, I'm like, Oh, you should not do that. I don't know why he went so hard, right? Like why not have a more subtle accent if yeah. you can't like nail it? Well, and that's yeah. so interesting fact about this movie that I was reading about last night. When they first started getting ready for this film, Will Smith wanted to do a bunch of facial prosthetics to make him look just like Richard Williams, mm. because Richard Williams has a that's very distinct, like, cheek and jawline like he's got that really hard cheek and jawline and what someone was like we could just cgi his face on you and then he came to his shit. fucking senses <laughs> well no it was the director looked at him and said no will we're not doing that because it's going to take people out of the movie like all they're going to say is what Thank the hell you. happened to will Smith? and well what is wrong with you and i get what he's doing like he, he wants to make it as realistic as possible but people don't understand that i don't need to see richard williams on the screen i need no. to see a good portrayal of who Richard Williams was. I don't know who Richard Williams is. I don't know what he looks like. So yeah. I'm here to play make believe. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like I'm here to learn something in an interesting way instead of doing research. Going to down my the head rabbit place. Right. <laughs> Dude, this guy's so out of touch with what we we come to movies for. I'm telling you. So I was glad the director put his foot down and, and didn't let him do that. But yeah, I guess he had like a two and a half hour makeup process that was set up to, to make him look just like Richard Williams. And I was like, oh, I'm glad. I still love Will Smith, but hearing that, I'm yeah. like, what a dumbass. Yeah. Dude, like- <laughs> no, I, well, and I love, and I've said before, like even in Gemini, man, when we reviewed it, the man can deliver a monologue. Like when he's talking to those girls or like he's talking to his wife, like there's moments in this movie, Casey made a good point that we talked about last night is Will Smith. He's made his, bread and butter on likable characters. Like Mm -hmm. no matter what his characters are likable. This is one of the first times maybe besides the talent, not Mr. Not Ripley. What was the other one? Anyway, he did another one early on in his career where he was kind of unlikable, but this movie, he was simultaneously very likable, but man, when he was unlikable, God, I wanted to reach the screen and fucking smack him around. Like, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? I liked his character and disliked his character probably the same amount, right? Because from one perspective, I get it. You live in Compton and you've been poor your whole life. Your father abandoned you at some point. And you and your wife are athletes and you get in your head, we can train world-class athletes. So we're going to do it. The idea, though, of having children for the sole purpose of making world-class athletes, I get why the neighbor called the police, right? Or like, they didn't do a good job at really setting the the background for that, right? So that like wasn't well executed, but I get what they were trying to do of like, this family's crazy. This family pushes their kids super, super hard, basically for the sole purpose of getting the parents out of poverty. Anyway, so that's like likable and super unlikable. Yeah. And here's one of the themes. So I, I said, this is one of those movies that makes me go start Googling and like, all right, what happened? What didn't happen? Right. One of the articles that I was reading, they actually lived in a nicer neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And it talks mm-hmm. about how they moved the family to Compton because they felt like the more difficult environment would raise a stronger, like athlete child, whatever you want to have it. 
That's I think insane. even in the movie. Yeah. There's wow. So the movie character is less insane than real life. That's crazy. There's a handful of things that he did that like were kind of controversial for. Yeah. I mean, I think he bust a group of school kids there to like yell insults at mm-hmm. his daughters while they practiced to make them more prone to like not hearing that and becoming stronger. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that's like not in the movie that's really interesting where you're like, that's a little much. So little knowing much. that, I'm like, do it. Like if you're going to yeah. make this guy a controversial character with controversial training methods, do it. Why are we pulling punches here? Because that's well, way I, worse than anything we saw in the movie. And I think, well, I'll tell you, my least favorite part of the movie was the, and I mentioned this in the spoiler free, but like the over showing of the shitty neighborhood and the and the gang individuals at the tennis courts there was like three or four different scenes that were part of that and the interesting part to your point ian is is as i've done research that was like the least difficult thing that these girls went through because william richard did protect them quite a bit from the nasty element but it didn't take long for these guys to realize and you see this in the movie too where they actually started protecting them it didn't take long for them to realize what was going on and think it was interesting. And they actually found it entertaining to watch this dude basically mentally abuse his children to make them better athletes. And so they didn't, they weren't as bothersome as the movie made it out to be to them. In one of the articles, it was saying that some of the gang members that were, you know, supposedly harassing him was actually telling Richard to lay off his daughters. And like trying to get him to ease up. So I thought that was that was really interesting. To that's one thing I hate about these movies. Just trust me enough to give me the real story. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. like Javier said, don't pull punches because then I just feel kind of cheated a little bit or taken advantage of. Because you go and you find out like the real story or the real people, and you're like, oh, I don't just trust me with that story, and it's not gonna diminish it. If anything, I think it'd make it a little better, but. Yeah, I could be wrong. I don't know. That would villainize Richard, though. Right. And that's, that's probably what they were trying right. not to do. Mm-hmm. That's why they didn't do it, because the, the things that he did. And here's so it's this conundrum, right? Because at the end of the day, you still have to ask the question, er, bear the point that it fucking worked. Yeah. I mean, he reached his goal. So, like, say what you will about it's not crazy if it works. Right. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that the other daughters. I was what, curious like, to know what they, happened with all of them. I'm also curious what's the never relationship with him and his daughters. Like, do Serena and Venus like have good things to say about Richard? Well, from what I heard, Venus and Serena like gave the movie their blessing, so I'd assume that they had some good things to to say about him. I mean, yeah. like you said, like it worked. But I also know this was another one that, like, I found out where I was kind of surprised, but he actually had another family that he left. So like in 65, I think he was married to another gal. They had three daughters and two sons. And one day he just left them. And so there's like a quote from his oldest daughter that he was like, yeah, no, he was nothing but a sperm donor. He was not like a father figure at all. So it's really interesting to see how he interacts and works with his family now, as opposed to this other family. Could you imagine being one of those other kids? It's like, really, if you wanted a family that badly, you had one. Why didn't you put the effort into us? Yeah. Well, and to even add to that, the three older daughters to Serena and Venus are half siblings. They're or seen as they're his wife's daughters from Uh, another marriage. mm -hmm. So those three, so consider that, you know, Richard's original kids, his original five kids. Now he's raising three that aren't his blood children to be doctors and lawyers and all. And, you know, this is a tough one because we have this movie about Richard and yeah, he obviously was a pain in the ass and he had a lot of things figured out. But I liked that at least in a moment in this movie, they showed that the mom was as involved and a part of their success 
if not more so than Richard, because that was the most frustrating thing for me was not knowing anything about yeah. this story, watching this movie. I was super frustrated because I'm like, this guy has hurt these two girls as much as he's helped them because yeah. I could argue, yes, Venus was fantastic. She became one of the greatest tennis players in the world. If other than her sister, arguably the best, but how much better could she have been if she continued to compete in juniors, right? Like there's so many things that while he gets credit for saying, well, this is a genius move, there's no way to guarantee that that's a reason for the success, right? So the idea of case. burnout, if he's like, I'm not going to burn my kids out. I'm like, um, there's a risk you run when you try to make them children professional athletes mm -hmm. in every sport, yeah. right? And there's things you can do to like, yeah, mitigate burnout, but having them not compete is not generally not one of them. Yeah. Well, and especially because um, it was never indicated that in this movie or in any of, and I didn't do as much research. It seems like as Ian. So I'm curious to see what Ian has to say about this, but like it never occurred to me or even came into a thought that either of these two girls ever, because the thing with athlete burnout as young is that they don't actually want to play. They're playing because their parents tell them they need to, and their parents mm -hmm. are pushing them to these two always struck me and everything that I've seen and read and heard them say as they always wanted to play, they were always part of the program and never were being forced to play or felt like they were, they wanted it as much as their dad did. So to me, the burnout was never going to be as big of a problem for them as it is for a lot of kids, because a lot of times it's, they're doing it because their parents tell them they should. Yeah. And I don't know if like it's from the training or he got really lucky that his two da daughters had some serious mental fortitude yeah. right? because like, yeah, JJ, it is like, that is abuse, right? Like, that is. So the fact that they were able to channel that into training and maybe they did a good job of being like, this is training and family life was great. Right. Sure. Cause like, I don't know in the movie, they didn't like really have that line. Yeah. Like he was the toughest thing he made him do was like train in the rain. Yeah. And that's yeah. like, I trained in the rain all the time and I'm not a serious athlete. Like that's that like, didn't even phase me as something that's like super tough, yeah. you know? And do tennis players train in the rain or like, do they play in the rain? I don't think they, I don't they think don't, they, they do. Because the, the balls get too, it, it, when he was talking about the balls get yeah. heavy and they just kind of die when they hit a certain level of, of being wet, you're done. So they yeah. don't play. If there's a rain, it's like baseball. There's a rain delay. They'll cover the court. Cause that's the right. other is you'll get puddles and shit in the court. No matter how yeah. good the courts are, they puddle yeah. up. There's cuts. I'm sure they, yeah, so. they, that's pretty dangerous. Oh yeah. Well, and there's different court styles, right? So on a, an indoor you're fine, but like on a court, that's like a hard, there's hard basketball courts, things like that. But then there's dirt courts that, you're done because it, it turns into mud. It's like, mud, yeah. 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 And then there's grass courts, which the same yeah. thing. You're going to have these soft – it's going to be like being in the outfield in the baseball game in the middle of a torrential downpour. You're actually in a bog. You're not – so, yeah, they don't play in the rain. And that's why I, I did laugh, to your point, Javier, that the next-door neighbor, that's when the cops got called because they were practicing in the rain. Yeah, I'm like, like yeah. it's fucking rain. <laughs> yeah. What are they going to do? Get, catch cold? Who gives a yeah. shit? Their mom's a nurse. It's not like they're going to, you know what I mean? I, yeah. Anyway. Dude, that, oh, it made what? me mad too when that like social worker shows up, this white lady that's like, it's a little late to be playing. And he's like, okay, let's, let's check on the kids. I was like, that was a great scene. So I was like, yeah. fuck this lady. Fuck all these cops. Get yeah. the fuck out of here. Yeah. I have a feeling when I watched that scene, Javier, that you would enjoy that. I'm getting better at like finding my Javier moments in movies. <laughs> I love anytime I'll, I'll give you a secret, Ian. Anytime authority is challenged, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, I have I'm definitely learning that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially from D D. You you give me all the answers. At the yeah, I'm DMZ let, allows me to be the person I truly am, <laughs> which is apparently a murderous psychopath. Javier <laughs> I mean, is a murder hope down inside. One thing I did really like about this movie because it brings up a really interesting question in my mind, and Javier, you're kind of the only one qualified to answer this right now, but because I completely believe like the more difficult an environment the stronger people can become as a result of that, that difficulty. But as a parent, 
what is that level of like acceptable difficulty to give your kids to make them better before you like cross a line? I think, I don't know, to be honest, because my childhood was not great. It was difficult. And I don't think I'm better because of it. I think I'm worse off because of it. Right. So Mm -hmm. I think the idea that putting children through hard things makes them better is a shitty excuse for shitty parenting. That's what I think. I believe in my son solving his own problems at a certain point. And, And even now, like, trying to like come to terms with his emotions and, and like having to do things on your own is difficult in and of itself, right? Making things more difficult is just, I think, bad parenting. So I don't know. I'm not training Aeson to be a world-class athlete, right? I'm training him to be a productive member of society and more importantly, happy. That's my goal. So (laughs) I don't have a good answer. That is a good answer. Thanks for sharing that. Not a parent, obviously. So really my take this with a grain of salt, but to me, part of that is, is that's what good coaches are for, right? Because they make that their life's not to be, and we've made them more into this than they, to me, were ever, or at least when I was in sports, they're not meant to be necessarily like a support system. These are the people that are supposed to teach you how to be better at the sport, provide you the best chance to win a game or, you know, whatever, be the best you can be but they're the ones that get to make it challenging and make things difficult for you. So that when you go home, your parents then can say, yeah, but that's only because of football or tennis or baseball or whatever the sport is here at home. Everything's good. We're going to walk you through. We're going to make things not as difficult as possible. I had coaches that, man, I wanted to punch them in the face, but they made me better at the sports I was playing because they made things harder and they challenged me constantly, but I would come home And my mom would, and my dad would be like, man, that sounds like a rough day of practice, but you leave that on the football field or you leave that on the baseball field, you're home now. It's okay. And it was a safe environment from that sport. I can't imagine having my dad because my dad was my coach a couple of times, like in little league, man, that shit drove me crazy because you can't compartmentalize as much as you want to. You have to be perfect at compartmentalizing yourself, right? As a parent, you have to separate that parent coach roles. And Mm -hmm. then on top of that, you have to teach your kid to do the same thing. They can't look at you as a parent when you're coaching them. They have to look at you as a coach because those roles are so different while there's similarities. If they're looking at you as a parent and you're making them practice in the rain and you're having busing kids in to yell insults to them, that starts to relate. I don't know how you don't look at that and go, my dad's a dick, right? Yeah. versus my coach is a dick. It was one thing for me to say, my coach is an asshole, but my dad isn't. But when my dad was being a dick as my baseball coach, my dad was a dick. Like, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So that, no. like, to me, finding that line and being able to, to not only compartmentalize a parent as a coach, but also get your kid to realize, I'm not your dad in this moment. I'm your coach. Now that we're done playing baseball, I'm your parent. And I think you have to have some serious lines, in my opinion, no, that really makes sense because we do that with other stuff, right? Like teachers, like your teacher challenges yeah. you, pushes you, and your teacher's a dick. But yeah. like your parents should be on your side yeah. when it comes to, you know, and sports. Yeah, we do that all the time. I think that's a really good point, yeah. actually. Speaking of like coaches who are dicks, we were once playing, I played rugby in high school, mm-hmm. and we were once playing this game and we were doing terribly, right? <laughs> and coach calls a timeout, gets the team together, and he literally comes up to us and he says, this is the worst plane I've ever seen you guys do. You either front up or fuck off. And he literally told us to go home if we weren't here to play. And I was like, hmm, okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which well, is a problem for someone a- like me because I play sports because they're fun. <laughs> <laughs> At that moment, I realized not everyone plays sports because they think they're fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fair. I, mean, I think that's such a big challenge of being a coach. And like you're saying, like that could go for teachers, that could go even for parents or whatever it may be. But anytime you're in a coaching, teaching, mentoring role, I think you have to do so much work to figure out where people's lines are. Because the line for doing a challenging task for Ian is not going to be the same as JJ. It's not going to be the same as Javier. And like being able to recognize those signs of like, how far can I push this person that's for their best? And how far I can push this person to where it's counterproductive. But 
And there's and obviously how do you the communicate that, right? Like, yeah, for JJ, you could probably get in his face, right? And be like, yeah, and push him and be like rough with him. I don't respond to that at all, right? Like, I need to feel like my coach is on my side. And if, and then my coach puts me in hard situations, like in boxing, he's put me in hard fights or he's made me spar hard people and didn't even tell me. Like one time I sparred the number three heavyweight, amateur heavyweight in the country. And he didn't tell me. He just put me in there. He's like, yeah, he's tough. I didn't find out till <laughs> afterwards the rap sheet that this guy had. So like, and that's, I respond really well to that. So yeah, no, you're right. Even like Ian, the, not only the way that you're challenging or how much you're challenging them, but like the way that you communicate that is different for each person. Yeah. 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 And that's, I think one of the great things about this movie is you get to see this journey and how this dad pushed his kids. And obviously, like I said, that's the crazy piece about this whole thing is regardless of how it plays out or how it was in a real world, it worked. But I think to me, and I'd be interested to know, and again, this is all speculation. I would love to have a conversation with these two women and say, was your mom the support system, right? Did you go home, your dad kicked your ass all day, and then was your mom the person you went home to and she created a safe place? Or was it your sisters? Or Because to me, for that to work that way, one, you have to have some sort of intestinal and mental fortitude that I probably just don't have. I definitely don't have. I'm too sensitive. <laughs> I, I, I thought about joining the military and I was like, nah, I can't. <laughs> I need people to tell me I'm doing Do you have a job. problem with authority. You I have a problem with authority there. and I'm way too sensitive. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Cause that's to me, like there's gotta be somewhere that they went that was safe. Right. That wasn't this just, and I mean, they showed like spots where like the family was having fun and they were enjoying. So, I mean, I don't want to sit here and vilify Richard. I don't agree with his methods that obviously worked, but there were also moments that they showed like, where he was having fun with these kids, right? Like they obviously yeah. cared for him. Even yeah. now today you read interviews where they, I don't think I've ever read an interview where either one of them have shit on their dad, though it was easy to yeah. do because Here's man, he was an idiot. When, when you're a parent, him. your priority is to be a parent, yeah. not to be a coach, right? Like how do you be both? Cause even in the movie after Venus just kicked ass at some juniors tournament they're like bragging about it and then he drops them off at a store and tries to drive away without them that is a very blurred line between dad and coach mm -hmm. right yeah because they're they're sitting there bragging to their siblings with their parents right from their perspective and then he's in coach mode so how do you like how do you know whether your dad is being a coach right now or being a dad yeah and it's interesting too with his character and I'm glad they showed both sides to this, right? Like, cause it kind of my critique was not seeing enough of that other side, but there's a lot of contradictions that he does. Like he says, like, I'll never leave you. Like he tells that story about his dad that just took off when he was getting beat. But yeah, he tries to leave his kids at the store and just drives off. And then he tells him like, no bragging. But at the final match, he's like, you better remember that name, Venus Williams. Hey, you see the score? Duh. And it just, he becomes this kind of contradiction, which I feel like is very realistic and that we all kind of do that, where we have what we want to be and what we're trying to achieve, but we still have our shortcomings as people that we're trying to overcome. So I'm glad that did, they did that. Yeah. Um, I, I liked that story too, where his dad ran away because in that final scene where Venus is getting her ass handed to her by like the number one seed in the world, he comes to the audience and he sits down, right? So like yeah. he kind of had this choice of like hang out back there for the whole match, leave or come support your daughter, right? And he chose to be there and he never was in the whole movie. Right? Yeah. He was never in the audience supporting his daughter. So I thought that was a cool little like, that was them showing that he's trying to be better than his dad was. And, you know, yeah. that's all you can, I guess, ask for. Which is ironic considering that he had a whole nother bunch of kids that he left. But yeah, that's, that's game changing for me. That's like, yeah. what a shitty dad. Yeah. Like what a shitty person. So yeah. it's really hard for me to give him the benefit of the doubt knowing that. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's other circumstances that he left and obviously they probably don't want him to come back. Cause I mean, they alluded to the fact that at least one of his sons showed up at the house and like 
tried to have some relationship because the wife in this movie talked about, you know, your son shows up in that big fight in the kitchen, you know, you're, oh, and you're like, this is my right. son and he found me or whatever it was. And so, I mean, obviously there's probably more to that, but it really does change the perspective knowing like the full story. Cause like I said, in that movie, they only mention it, but again, this movie, they're walking this fine line and this movie is about this guy and how he raised his kids. So you can't 100% vilify and there's nothing that's going to vilify this guy more than him having another family that he just up and left that they actually yeah. go. Yeah. He just disappeared on him. You know, he ghosted him. So they mention it to show that this guy's flawed. We see that. And obviously in this second round or whatever you want to call it, or third, technically he was married three times. I think she was the last that he got it somewhat right. But I, yeah, for me, it's yeah. tough to watch this whole parents trying to make their kids famous. Because again, for me, I go, where do you draw that line? Like between your kids being famous and then you tried and it didn't work out. Right. Like yeah. I, that can be so damn. Well, how many are out there that, that does do that? Like how many out there that is the case? Sorry. I kind of cut you off. Did you? No, no, you're good. I was done, but you're right there's got to be more that have very little, if any success in their chosen sport or their parents. You are sport. one injury away yeah. from losing that, that dream. Absolutely. Right? You're one injury, one mental breakdown, one, like one thing can change and your any chance of having like a high end professional athletic career is over. Yeah. See, one of the things that I read, and I can't remember her name. I think it was Isha, but I could be wrong. Um, but one of the other daughters was also training in tennis and had an injury. I think it was like a back injury or something like that and could no longer play at that level. And then to see like where her two sisters, the level that they achieved and like knowing that you were getting the same training, had the same opportunities and that injury held you back. That's got to be rough. And that's got to be hard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and since we talked so much about it, Venus, because that's, again, like Javier mentioned early on, this is more about Venus than it was Serena. Serena, you learn about how she got her training because in one moment in the end, you know, Richard comes to her and says, look, I set this up to basically put you in the worst unenviable position for however long because she's been there training and then watching everything be about Venus. Like I realized, look, Serena, because I told Casey, I was like, I'm amazed at how little they're talking about Serena. Yeah, because I don't know a lot about tennis, but I followed it for a good while. And I was very intrigued by these two women that came in and just dominated the sport. Cause I get really intrigued by any sport where someone can come in or a team can come in and just absolutely obliterate and change the game. And they did that. So I knew very loosely that Serena's a better tennis player than Venus while Venus is unbelievably good. Serena's better. So I was like, why is this so much about Venus? And then he has that, that monologue where he tells her, I did this so that you, because I knew you could take it and you'll be better than even Venus. And I'm like, Jesus, that's a dangerous game. Because that's a you gamble. Can, is what yeah, because what happens when it doesn't work and you've now emotionally and mentally broken this poor girl, right? And now she doesn't play tennis. She goes on to have some poor, depressed, manic, whatever you want to call it. So yeah. Because for every one Serena, life. there's a thousand people who went through that. Yeah. I no. it just, I was like, man, this guy is gambling with, and I, like I said, great movie. I'm glad it paid off for those two, especially, but it's such a, like, I was so knotted up the second half of this movie because I'm just watching this going, what if this hadn't worked? We base all of this praise and the fact that this man has his own a movie base basically on him and his tactics what if it didn't work we're having a very different comment one we don't know anything about venus and serena williams if it doesn't work they're just two more kids that got crushed by parental dreams but man that's a very different conversation if that doesn't work right so kudos to those yeah. girls for being that tough because i couldn't have put up with the shit that yeah. he put them through for that like i'm not that cool but like, then there's even the, uh, the idea that they could be really good at juniors and get their ass handed to them in the pros yeah. or never make it to the pros, right? Yeah. Like there's a, in the local boxing community. So there's one coach who has like 
two kids that are multiple national champions, mm. right? Like multiple times, incredible boxers. I cannot imagine that they have a great parent child relationship because he coaches them full time, mm. pushes them super, super hard. They're incredible athletes. Don't get me wrong. But like at the end of the day, I don't think anyone's going to remember their name, right? <laughs> like, uh, I think, I think uh, they're going to be great athletes as kids. And then eventually they're going to figure out, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. Like, yeah. and I, I just can't imagine that there are parents out there that are willing to sacrifice their relationship with their kid so that their kid has maybe has a shot at being famous. Yeah. That's wild to me. Yeah. It's crazy. All right. So we've talked a lot about this family. I, I want to talk about at least one more thing before we wrap up with, with this movie. And that is, fucking sports that give you a chance to ice someone like that. You know, how pissed off. I was dude, that, that stupid that's girl went, stupid. To take a, went to quote unquote, take a shit in the middle of that match and fucking ice Venus. Went. Boy, I would have lost my fucking mind. Oh, that's annoying as shit. I mean, smart, but annoying. It's kind shit. of funny though, because somebody, I was watching the movie with pointed this out, but if Venus had been going to competitions, that might have given her the skill set or the the opportunity to, to deal with not that. yeah to deal with being iced like that. So that is one interesting critique where I was like, no well, pros and cons to your methods because she didn't get the experience of actually competing, and then it shows itself on that match. But mm-hmm. yeah. Also, why didn't she just do it right back? Like as soon as that spanner spanner <laughs> stepped back on the court, been like, oh, I also have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Well, and I hate to dive into it, but but I don't because it's real, right? I don't know that Venus would have gotten away with it. Let's just say that mm-hmm. the roles are reversed. Only Venus isn't the best in the world, and this best in the world is just beating the shit out of her. And she decides, I'm going to go take a shit break to ISIS. Girl, as a newly introduced 14-year-old and as a black girl, I don't think she gets away with it. I mm-hmm. think it becomes controversial and that's what it becomes about as opposed to here's this white girl that just decided she's going to do it because she's getting her ass handed to her by a 14 year old. So to me, like that has to play into it as much as I hate, cause I don't like to play into those things, but it's true. I mean, I, cause I thought the same thing. I was like, man, if the roles were reversed and she had tried to do that to her, like this would have been a different conversation. I think they definitely would have like, if she had won, they would have been, like she only won because she cheated. Yeah. Right. Whereas yeah. like with this, can you make that check, argument if they both did it? That's what I'm saying. Right. Like yeah. she cheated. And by me doing the same thing, it puts a spotlight on the fact that she tried to cheat in the first place. Yeah. And I'm just leveling the playing ground. I'm just showing that we can both play that game. Yeah. That was the rabbit hole. I went down as I started looking at what did Richard have to say about that match after that happened? Because this guy's notorious for not being able to keep his mouth shut, right? Yeah. So I was very curious, but they I didn't find anything that showed him saying anything controversial, which I guess in to his credit is smart because you don't want to drive a wedge into this. It was bad enough that he was as controversial as he was, but then when you make your daughter controversial by bitching about she would have won if this girl hadn't taken a shit break in the middle. It just annoyed me. I was like, this is one thing that, and I don't know, enough about tennis to know if they've created a rule around it, but like now, but like, yeah, that would have been, I'd have been so salty. There is something to be said about people knowing who won. So you don't have to say anything when people know who won. Yeah. If that match went went that way and I was spectating that, I would have walked away and been like, Venus kicked her ass the first half and would have continued to do that. So well, I think she was up like five games or five matches or something like four matches. Like she was up enough that she was like one match away from winning yeah. the, turn, the actual match. She was one game away from winning the match. So I was like, or set, sorry, she was one set away from winning the match. I think when that happened and then yeah. fell behind and that's, that's nasty to do in tennis, but man, I was like, but man, can you tactic. blame the Spanish chick Hell for playing no. the game? Hell no, I can't blame her. Right? Like, if you have the ability, you take out every advantage that you have, Mm -hmm. especially for 400 grand or whatever was on the line. Yeah. Well, and you know that this four, you're about to lose to a 14 year old as the number one. And I think this girl was like 
in her late teens or early 20s when this match was going on. Yeah, that sucks. I mean, she was getting her ass handed to her by a 14-year-old. Yeah, you do what you got to do at that point, right? Because your money is based on winning. Like Mm -hmm. you see with, you know, the endorsements and things like that. And, you know, that girl's playing for the same endorsements. Like she wants someone to pay her millions of dollars for a shoe, you know? Yeah. So. Those are my favorite things though about sports, those little things that you do. Mm-hmm. Right. Like in boxing, there's a couple of things, but the last guy fought spat out his mouth guard. And so the ref stopped it. We had to go to our corners. This dude got a 30 second break because he spat out his mouth guard. Yeah. And I was like, what a Jeez. pussy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they'll do that to kickers in football. So they're getting ready to kick a field goal, game winning field goal, and the other coach will oh, call yeah. like three timeouts in a row. Yeah, because you're just sitting there going, you son of a bitch, because now I got to sit for 30 seconds and wait, reline up, get ready to kick. You psych yourself up. Fucking yeah. timeout. Fucker. That's <laughs> this awesome. Was two minute. So, I mean, there's a lot of games and sports that have that. But I will say that shit drives me crazy in every sport. Yeah, because I yeah. while I understand it and I get it and I would do it myself to a certain degree. I fucking hate that shit. But I'm the guy that I hate watching football, especially pro football, because they can win on a field goal. I'm like, fuck off. No game should end on a fucking field goal. I, it shit <laughs> pisses me off. But I think, because to me, I don't like the idea of something that's like a cheap, what I consider, and this is me, what I consider a cheap tactic, and that's a cheap tactic. Like I'm I losing. have too much pride yeah. to win off of one of those. Yeah. Right? Like, I would rather yeah. lose. <laughs> yeah. Which is why, you know, I have the record that I have and I'm not a pro boxer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Should we make this thing? Yeah. All right. Do it. So those of you who haven't listened to us, if you're first time joining us, we rate movies on a five tier scale, zero to five scale, zero being absolute garbage, five being a fantastic, perfect movie. With that, we'll kick it off. Overall, I don't want it to feel like I didn't like this movie. I enjoyed this movie. I learned a lot in this movie. Thought it was a very interesting take on the parent child professional athlete relationship and that whole story. We've seen it a few times in different areas, but this one's an interesting one because it's from start to finish with what arguably could be considered a not very good guy, right? But he gets a lot of credit for these two women that are just fantastic athletes and the best in the world at what they do, period. And, you know, we could argue semantics on whether or not he did a good job of raising his kids or not. It's hard because one wrong move, something goes a little bit different. And we're having a very different dialogue about how he coached these kids. So it was very interesting to watch that. I do think the movie at two and a half hours is bloated. There's things in it that just weren't necessary. It was two and a half hours. It's long. Two hours, 24. It's closer to two and a half hours than it is two. How about that? And I felt it, especially at the beginning. It took a long time for me in this movie, probably 35 minutes to get to a point that I cared about this movie. And I was getting nervous probably at the 30 minute mark. I was like, I'm going to hate this movie because it's not going anywhere. It's just the same thing. It's them arguing with the people around them about how they're coaching their kids and then coaching their kids. And I'm like, I want to see the nuance and I want to see this person, this man's character and those kids, how they, these girls, how they handled it. So when they finally got there, amazing movie. Like it was really interesting. We didn't talk about him, but John Barenthal in this movie he stole this movie. As soon as he came in this movie, like I could not get enough. Yeah. Of John Barenthal's I was like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. And I, what a patient man, the guy that this real coach, if it went even half of what this movie showed, like Richard Williams is lucky. He never got decked. Because, man, the shit that he put this dude through, like, wow, dude. Because like, the amount of money I, you're spending to get to ooh. keep these girls there. Ooh. And then finding out, like, oh, they're not going to compete in juniors. So basically, you train them for free for, like, four years or three yeah. years, whatever it was. And there's that one point where he goes, you might have mentioned this back in Compton. And he's like, yeah, but then you wouldn't have made the best decision of your life. And it's like, I... I would struggle to interact with that man peacefully and calmly after that quote or after he said that. Well, and he's the coach, right? But you can see by the end of this movie, like Williams is controlling this man. Like Richard Williams is controlling this guy Mm -hmm. that owns 
a multi-million dollar coaching tennis coaching business, which is my dream, dude. I would love to just have a compound where I train people, right? Awesome. And he's you. produced champions, like yeah. great tennis players. And yet this dude comes out of Compton with a couple of girls that can play some serious tennis. And now all of a sudden it's like, he he's driving his golf cart, buying a house for him. I'm like, Jesus, like, wow. So can you imagine 15% off of Venus and what Venus and Serena made? Oh. I mean, like, is he, he made still making it. that? I don't know. It just, but he uh, made it at least on that initial 14 million. I'll take 15% of 14 million. What is 15% of 14 million? Two, I got you. Hold on. 2.1 mil? 15%? Yeah, 2.1 yeah. mil, dude. Yeah. Well, and that was over the course of like four years, right? Sure. Yeah. But I'll take okay. 2.4, 2.1 million for four years worth of work. That's 525 now, grand a year. Now, yeah, the question I is how much, for how much was he spending to train them? Because he's he's paying oh. for a house. He's, you know what I mean? Like, so you have to kind of balance those costs. But that was just Venus. Now you got Serena, both of them were making their contracts. Were huge, plus they're making money on tournaments and shit. So, yeah, John Barenthal was great. The acting was very good in this movie. That The girl that played Venus, fantastic. Even the one that played Serena. I mean... All of the acting in this movie was very, very well done. I did enjoy it. I learned a lot from it. And like Ian, it made me want to learn a little bit more. My problem was I went down the rabbit hole of the extremities of this movie. Like, was he really the asshole that they showed him at times in this movie? Or was, you know, that exaggerated? But I didn't really dive too deep on the training part and had the story of their family, which I probably should have. But overall, good movie. I'm going to give it three and a half. And again, I think that's a lot due to the fact that it's just, it was bloated. There's just a lot to it that didn't need to be there, in my opinion. And I think you could have gotten the same value out of this movie without some of the things that were there. So I think it could have been a two-hour movie and just as good, if not better. So that's me, Javier. Rate this movie. I don't have a lot of complaints, but the length is valid. Like I think we're 30, 40 minutes in before we get John Barenthal to coach them, right? So it's a long movie. Yeah. I thought that the like character progression or like the, like whether these characters are good or bad was really good. But after hearing like some of the, what happened in real life, I'm a little disappointed with what they decided to show. Right. Yeah. And I feel like kind of cut some corners or, or just like, I almost feel lied to a little bit because had they shown me what, Richard was really like, I would have been like, this guy's a terrible person. <laughs> like, yeah, sure. He trained some athletes, but this guy is a bad person. Right? But they didn't give me that. Right? They tried to make him off like better than he, I don't know. I feel like they made that decision for me. <laughs> and I don't appreciate that. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm going to give this like a three and a half. I was going to rate it higher actually, but after hearing JJ's criticisms of it and Ian's points, I'm kind of bringing it down a little bit. It's still worth it. It's still a good movie. And I'll, I'd probably watch it again um, later down the road. But yeah, I feel like it's lacking a few things to give it like above that four, you know? Yeah, I'm with you. And I, I will add, I forgot to say whether I'd watch it again. I would, but I think I would start at the point that Tony Goldwyn starts training her, the first coach, mm -hmm. and she starts playing in the juniors. Because to me, that's when it got really interesting. I think everything before that, I just didn't need at least that much of. So yeah, I'd watch it again at certain parts. All right, Ian, bring us home. So I noticed about myself, whenever we do these, that you can stream. It always shows the length of the movie right before. And anytime it's over like two hours, I immediately like knock it down <laughs> a couple points. <laughs> so I got to get better at that. But what I really liked about this movie is that it brought out a lot of questions, whether that was learning more about it or that, you know, that kind of line as a parent or a coach, I feel like it should have maybe just gone to the extremes a little bit more of showing me the worst and the best. And I think they could have even made this as a bit of a like redemption story for him, knowing that he had this first family and then what he did like in the present, like trying to become this better person. Um, but for me, it was like an average movie. It's worth it. You should go and see it. It's a good story to hear and to know. And I think you come out a little bit better because of it. And you have some more questions and things like that. But but it was also kind of average, I guess you could say. So I'm going to kind of go in the middle and do a three. I can't see myself watching this one again because I, I feel like this is a story that I know. And once I know the story, it's like I don't 
So maybe like a few years down the road, I might rewatch it, but nothing like immediate. So that's where I stand. All right. There it is. Three and a half and a three. So. Maybe we should change it from would you watch it again to would you still recommend someone to watch it? Well, maybe right? we make Be- that adjustment. Yeah. Because Ian, you've got a good point. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I'd want to sit down and watch a two and a half hour movie again, but like, I wouldn't say no one should watch this. That's fair. Yeah. You know, and that's where I kind of do the, the spoiler free is my like, should they go see it? Should they not? Yeah. And then this one, I'm kind of a little more harsh, I guess you could say, because I'm thinking rewatchability. I'm thinking, how much did I enjoy this? Okay. But that's I fair. still would. Yeah. So that's how I do it. You don't have to do it that way, Javier. I know I don't, Ian. Don't tell me what to do. (laughs) (laughs) There's that trouble with authority. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, bar set pretty low if I'm the authority figure. (laughs) I was about to adjust and say, is that really the authority though, or is it more the he's sensitive? (laughs) Nah, maybe a little bit of both. Man, surviving in corporate America with a sensitivity and authority problem is has been tough. It's been a feat. Right? That's hilarious. <laughs> I love it. All right. There's King Richard. Decent. It was a pretty good movie. I Well done. It's good to see Will Smith back on the screen again, that's for sure. Because, man, when he does it well, he really does. And that's he made that character likable and very dislikable at the same time. So, yeah. well done there. Next week, we are changing things. So, I'll just give you a quick heads up and then we'll explain more about next with the next episode. But next week, we're going to do a couple of Christmas movies. Should be fun. Sounds like we're going to have some very high level arguments going on in the, these particular reviews. So that should be fun. And we're going to be on a two couple week lag after that. So the re, we're doing the Christmas movies one, cause it's Christmas time, but two, we're going to be, we've been releasing on the week of a movie. So we'll watch the movie Friday or Thursday and then record that weekend, same weekend release on the Monday after it's, it's a lot to do. So, what we're going to do now is get on a little bit of a delay. So it gives you guys a couple of weeks, those that listen to us to watch the movie to avoid spoilers. We'll still make sure those spoiler freeze are up for you as quickly as possible. But yeah, keep that in mind. We're going to be on a couple of week delay moving forward. So with that next week, <laughs> we'll be reviewing love actually. So yeah. join us for that one. Should be a fun review. Also catch us on our uh, social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at what's our verdict. Interact with us. Let us know what you think. Love hearing your thoughts on the movies as well. So jump in, tell us what you think. Go to our website, what's our verdict.com where you can listen to all of our episodes, past episodes. Uh, You can catch what's coming in the future. Keep ahead of the schedule. So you know what to watch, when to watch it for those that follow us and pick up some merch, all sorts of things, fun things you can do at our website. So with that, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye now. Cinematic out.